turning this up till it squeals. And then somebody tell me when it's loud enough. Can you hear me back there, Charles? Fine. Right. I'll start over. What a great honor it is for you to come out today to be here as the Texas Historical Commission unveils a marker for the Colleen Herald, which is the oldest continuous business in Colleen and which uh, is now celebrating its 100th anniversary. Perhaps many of you have had an opportunity to read the special edition that we published this morning. If not, I certainly hope you'll take the time to do that, and it tells probably as much about us as you'd care to know, but there's even more than that, by the way. We, we kept bringing things out of the vault till the wee hours the other night. Uh, I'd like to just give a brief history of the Herald, if I can, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with it. Uh, all this started um, in June of 1890. And the reason that we're celebrating it in uh, September is because on September the 27th of 1890, the Colleen Herald became an official newspaper recognized by the United States Post Office by the uh, award of a second-class mailing permit, and we have that permit. It's framed and on the counter in here if you'd like to see that piece of, of Herald history. The first thing we'd like to do is to honor our flag and our country. We have a great American, a retired general here with us this evening, who is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, General Robert Shoemaker. Thank you very much, Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, the flag I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There are a few people here that I would like to recognize. We have some uh, of the Carter family with us here today. First of all, we have Mrs. Bill Carter, who was the daughter-in-law of W.T. Carter, who owned and operated the Herald for so long. Miss Carter is here in the pretty blue suit on the, on the front. <laughs> With her are three granddaughters of uh, Mr. Carter, Mrs. Lila Smedley of Waco, here in the uh, lilac outfit, Mrs. Ann Herscher, in green, and uh, Mrs. Mary Carter Irwin from Colleen. There, Mary, in the beautiful red dress. <laughs> and also present is uh, Dr. Lee Irwin, her husband, and the Ir Irwin children, Bill, Tom, and Mary Ann, who are great grandchildren of, of Mr. W.T. Carter. Also, Also, I'd like uh, to recognize the presence of Mrs. Sue Mayburn, Mrs. Frank Mayburn, who is here today and who will actually unveil the marker in just a moment. So. And now I take great pleasure in presenting the uh, chairman of the Bell County Historical Commission, Dr. David Yielding. Thank you, Mr. Townsend, <coughs> Ms. Mayburn, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The Bell County Historical Commission is pleased to be here today in, in helping unveil the marker that we will uh, unveil uh, very soon for the Killeen Daily Herald. I would, first of all, like to recognize those members of the Bell County Historical Commission who are here. Uh, if you'd please hold your hand, Bob Shoemaker, uh, Nan Russell, Great L. Duncan, David Evans, Jack Hodes, Bernita Peoples, Polly Peaks Elmore, and are there any others that I met? Uh, yes, I see Mrs. Uh, Bar Cox. Anyone else? We appreciate your being here. And I would also like to recognize somebody I wish were an uh, honorary member of the Bell County Historical Commission, uh, and that's uh, Ms. Ann Hersher from Dallas. Uh, I wish that she were a member. We've enjoyed our association with Ann Hersher and the Meadows Foundation. Texas has for a long time had a program of marking 
uh, counties and communities and missions and individuals of achievement. The current market program that the state of Texas has actually began in 1936 in the centennial. And during that centennial year, there were many items marked across the state, including 12 that are presently uh, located in Bell County. Those uh, centennial markers are made of stone and they have on the face of them a laurel leaf with the lone star inside and a, and a description of what the marker commemorates. The one is, uh, one is uh, you may have seen on the courthouse lawn for Peter Hansborough Bell, the governor of the state of Texas when this became Bell County in 1850. Currently, the program of markers is under the operation of the Texas Historical Commission and it dates actually from about the 1950s. And historical markers are one of two types. They're either a building marker or a subject marker. The marker that we will dedicate today is a subject marker for the Killeen Daily Herald. It's been 100 years in its operation. Bell County has presently over 144 uh, historical markers of various types. Twelve markers are in Killeen. We still have a dozen of the 1936 markers around here. We're so happy to be able to uh, be here today for the dedication of this marker. Historical markers are a, a good way in which we can preserve history by giving people a visual representation of your history in your local area that you can actually see and understand better than some abstraction of the study of history. Mr. David Evans, Mr. Evans, would you hold up your hand? To my left, Mr. David Evans, who teaches uh, in the school across the street from us, uh, teaches history, is chairman of our markers committee. He told me a while ago that we now have in Bell County 17 marker applications pending approval. He has some marker applications with him and, and we'll be glad to provide you with a marker application uh, if you have uh, an item that you believe merits a Texas historical marker. The Bell County Historical Commission salutes you, Mr. Townsend, Lucia Mrs. Mayburn, in the uh, pursuit of this marker, it is not an easy achievement. Uh, and we are so happy to be here to help in the dedication of this historical marker. Thank you, Dr. Yielding. And now it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce the representative of District 54, the Honorable Layton Black, and we'd also recognize the presence of his lovely wife, Teresa. Thank you, Ray. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I want to tell you it's an extreme pleasure for me to be able to come down to Killeen, which is in my district, and to be a part of this very moment in history. As we stand here on this place and as we reflect back and we remember all of those things concerning this great newspaper, concerning this great land in Texas that brought us to this very moment. In the Bible, it mentions in the Old Testament, removing, removing markers, removing the markers of the land. And it gives specific instructions not to remove those markers. And I thought about that today as we stand and pay tribute to this great business to all of those people who have dealt with the newspaper business and this particular newspaper that brings it to this day. And I thought about the marker of freedom and the marker of free speech. And particular at this particular time in history when we have young men and women in foreign souls in this very serious hour as it deals with this community. And here's a newspaper who has withstood the test of time by dealing with markers of truth and of free speech. Oscar Wilde said it, in America, the president reigns for four years. Journalism, government, or journalism, governments, forever and ever. That is a marker that we will not remove in this country as long as we enjoy freedom. If our freedoms become endangered, it will be because that we have tinkered with the marker of the freedom of speech and the printed word. 
I'm a fan of Thomas Jefferson, as I know many of you are, and he had some great comments that I'd like to quote for you. He said, were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the latter. He also said, the press is the best instrument for enlightening the mind of man and improving him as a rational, moral, and social being. So you can see the important role in history that the press has played and that it will continue to play and the important role in history that it has played in this very community. I am extremely honored to be a part of this community, to have it a part in the 54th district, and to be here today to have a small part in this history of unveiling this marker concerning this great newspaper. And when they reflect back a hundred years from now, on this very day, may it be said that we did not remove the marker, we enhanced the marker, and we strengthened that fiber of freedom that binds each and every one of us. Free speech, the press, and the media. My congratulations to you today, Mrs. Mayburn. A particular congratulations and say thank you for the Texas Historical Commission and the Bell County Historic Commission for the work that they have done. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this program. I also have a resolution that was passed by the House. It says, whereas on this day we have gathered to dedicate two markers of great significance to our community. First, an official historical marker recognizing the Killeen Daily Herald as the oldest continuous privately owned business establishment in Killeen. And second, a tribute to the late Frank W. Mayburn, whose extraordinary vision and commitment played such a vital role in making the Herald a highly regarded publication. It is today, and whereas established in 1890, the Herald began life as a tiny one-man, one-room operation. Since that time, the newspaper has grown with the community reflecting Killeen's evolution from a small farm to market center to its present status of a thriving city close to 60,000 people. Whereas now celebrating its 100th anniversary, today's Herald boasts a circulation of over 17,500, rising to 20,500 for the Sunday edition. With computerized systems of writing, editing, and news type setting, the paper was truly joined the, has truly joined the electronic age progressed largely to, due to Mr. Mayburn, who was well known as a pioneer in the field of communication. Whereas over the year, this fine publication has garnered numerous accolades, including the coveted, the coveted General Excellence Award presented to the paper by the Texas Press Association in 1965 and again in 1971. Whereas out throughout a century of publication, the Killeen Daily Herald has provided the people of Killeen with the very high standards of journalism while never losing sight of the positive community-based philosophy. Through the joint efforts of the Bell County Historical Commission and the Texas Historical Commission, the Herald now receives well-deserved recognition for 100 years of exceptional service. And wherefore, therefore, let it be resolved that the Killeen Daily Herald be honored for a century of accomplishment in the field of journalism, that every member of its staff be commended for his or her individual contribution in maintaining this fine tradition be it further resolved that the members of the Bell County Historical Commission receive special praise for their significant efforts in securing the markers that will serve as an enduring tribute to the achievements of the Killeen Daily Herald and to the vision of Frank W. Mayburn, signed Leighton Black District 54 representative. Thank you very much for allowing me to be a part of this very important occasion in history. Thank you. Honorable Senator Temple Dixon with us, our representative in the Senate, and he has a few words to say. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate the opportunity of being with Mrs. Mayburn and all of you, Gerald Skidmore, and, and all the rest that uh, have continued this paper. I enjoy celebrating the history of the short history of uh, our country, uh, this part of the country. It's exciting to me. And uh, it was well said, I thought, uh, Layton, that this is not only a celebration of 100 years of service of this newspaper, but it should be, and it's appropriate that it be 
uh, a celebration of the First Amendment to our Constitution. That makes me feel good. I, I wish my granddaddy uh, had also been a fan of Thomas Jefferson Layton. <clears throat> my granddaddy Joseph Dixon was in Congress in, uh, uh, seven, or in 1800 when Aaron Burr and Thomas Jefferson tied, and he voted for Aaron Burr. <laughs> And the folks from North Carolina brought him home as a result of that vote. Uh, I have a, uh, a certificate and a resolution uh, from the Senate of Texas uh, to present uh, uh, to these uh, nice folks. And, and I want to do that and, and tell you that uh, you have my warm wishes. And I also bring uh, uh, the warmest wishes uh, and congratulations from uh, the Lieutenant Governor uh, of the state whose hometown is here and who joins me uh, in appreciating this celebration. Thank you very much. We have his honor the mayor of Copper's Cove who would like to say a word at this time, Jim Smith. <laughs> Mrs. Mayburn, Mr. Thompson, distinguished guests, it's my pleasure to be able to thank the Colleen Daly Herald for the outstanding journalistic con contributions to this area and also for their community support. And as a small token of our appreciation from Coppers Cove, it's my pleasure to present to Mrs. Mayburn a proclamation from the city of Coppers Cove. Thank you very much. At this time, we would like, uh, if she would, for Mrs. Mayburn to come to the marker. And uh, as she is unveiling the top portion of this, excuse me, I'll uh, read the inscription. It says, Colleen Herald. W.E. Bennett began publishing the Colleen Herald in June 1890, eight years after the town of Colleen was founded. Later owners of the newspaper included W.T. Carter, an active civic leader who served as publisher and editor from 1907 to 1950. Begun as a weekly publication, the Herald has been a daily paper since 1953. From the earliest days of Colleen, the Herald has grown with the town and has chronicled the area's dynamic progress. It is now the oldest privately owned and continuously operated business enterprise in the city of Colleen, dedicated in 1990. Underneath the main historical marker is a supplementary plaque, which she will now uncover. And this is dedicated to Frank W. Mayburn, 1903 to 1987, a Central Texas communications pioneer who converted the Herald from a weekly to a successful daily in 1953. Thank you very much. Sun, and so at this time I would uh, invite each of you, if you would, to come back into the building, uh, go back to our employee lounge, which is at the very rear of the building, and on your way in you will be entertained with music by C.K. Watson and the old timers from the Bob Gilmore Senior Center here in Colleen. Thank you again very, very much for coming, and we look forward to serving you for another hundred years.